I'm Emily Kajiana and welcome to another episode of Dissecting with Emily. And in our last episode, we are at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History in Pittsburgh looking at the mounted specimen of the Tyrannosaurus rex holotype. The holotype, again, being the original or name-bearing um, specimen of the species. But our overall goal was to actually bring home uh, the eight original bones and bring them back here to Ohio University for CT scanning. And what we wanted to do for you today is show you these eight bones and also compare them to another specimen that we have, which is from the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Great. Okay, well, let's start with the mandible. So this is the left mandible of the New York specimen. And uh, we have the left dentary and the left serangular of the uh, holotype specimen. And you can see that the dentary would sit here, which is um, more rostral in the jaw and then the serangular would sit here more caudally in the jaw. And so that would be how kind of um, the left jaw is situated in the Tyrannosaurus rex. And if you actually come over here and look at the right dentary, um, what we really uh, like about this part is that it has really high bone quality and the bone was just preserved really well. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, let's swap positions here, Emily. And I'm Larry Whitmer, and we're really thrilled to be able to uh, show you these beautiful skull bones. So this bone right here is the left maxilla, the upper jaw. You can see how beautifully preserved uh, the teeth are. Really, all of the bone is really nicely preserved in this specimen. This equivalent position in this complete skull, uh, AMNH 5027, um, is going to be this bone right here. So here are the teeth. This part coming up here is going to be equivalent to this part in this area right here. We're also really excited to have these two bones. These are the lacrimals. The lacrimals are tiny little bones on the inside of the, of, of the eye of humans, but in T-Rex and other theropod dinosaurs, it's an enormous pillar. Uh, here's the left lacrimal right here, and I'll sort of try to put it in place here just, just generally because I don't want the, the, the bones to touch, but you can sort of see how this would sit in place uh, relative to the maxilla. If I pull it over here, I can put it in place um, on the American Museum skull right here. And so if I pull this out of position here, you can sort of see that these are in fact the same bones. And so this area right in here is called the antorbital cavity. That's where a paranasal air sinus would sit. Whereas this area back here is the orbit. That's where the eyeball will sit. And if I pull this in so you can see it um, in more detail, you can see how beautiful the bone quality is here. Very high resolution specimens, uh, all of them are like this. And so we'll be able to get some really good um, soft tissue information just by looking at the surface of the bones. Can't wait to get inside with CT scanning. This bone right here is called the squamosal and it's from the back part of the skull um, over here. And so it sit right around in here. This part is gonna be equivalent here to receive this process from the postorbital. This flange right here is this portion right here. Again, beautiful bone texture all the way around. Just a very important specimen for us. Uh, this last bone, the eighth of the preserved skull bones, is one from the roof of the mouth, the palate, called the ectopterygoid. And I can't really show you where this is in place because it would be up on the roof of the mouth. But it turns out that this can actually be very helpful for us to understand other specimens such as this one. In this case, actually, the ectopterygoid actually floated out of position. This bone is not supposed to be here. But if we compare this right here, we can see how this ectopterygoid right here um, shows that this is, in fact, an ectopterygoid in AMNH 5027 that's out of position, having floated out of the palate and up into the antorbital cavity. And so the next step for these eight bones is to actually get them CT scanned and we're really excited to see what additional information these bones will hold for us. And so with that, I'm Emily Caggiano. And I'm Larry Whitmer. And that's all for today.